Hello and welcome to the Kinesiology 4130 Foods and Nutrition introductory video. My name is Derek Marks. I'm your instructor for this course this semester. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover pretty much all the class basics as you would in a face-to-face -face class on the first day. We're going to go over the syllabus and then we're going to get into how you can su most successfully navigate uh, using Blackboard for this course since it is all online. For those of you new to online classes, which at this point may not be too many of you, but nonetheless, I'm going to go over it as if it was your first uh, online class. The duration of this video tends to be about 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, please watch the whole thing. There's a lot of important information for you to uh, follow or learn in order to successfully or most successfully navigate this course. A little bit about myself before I get into it. I've been teaching this specific online class since 2015. I used to be a face-to-face -face or on-campus instructor at CSU Stanislaus from 2003 to 2006 in the kinesiology department. Uh, since 2006, I've been at St. Mary's College of California over here in Moraga. Uh, I teach the nutrition classes there. I also am the sport nutritionist for the Department of Athletics there, which I've been in that role since 2006. Uh, one thing I really like about that role is my experiences counseling and working with teams and individual athletes on their nutrition, nutritional plans. Um, all that information really trickles into this class. And so every time I update this class, I try to incorporate some of my experiences with athletes in the real world to really apply nutritional information. Um, so yeah, so let's, let's get into this. Uh, you've obviously found the page, and so... Um, and so you're on the class webpage, you found the video. On the left side of the Blackboard uh, homepage, you have your class menu. Uh, you obviously click the Start Here link, or maybe you went to the link I'm going to send you on an email. Um, but nonetheless, you, you found us, right? Uh, on this Start Here link, you're, there's going to be a few things. Uh, the syllabus is what we're going to go over first. And so let's go there. When you click on the syllabus, you'll have options. You can either download it, which I suggest, download it, put it on your computer so you always have access, or you can just view it through Blackboard. The syllabus, I will go over the entire thing, but I'm definitely going to skip some parts that you're able to read on your own, just in the interest of time. Uh, the course description, yep, there it is. Uh, this is, I would say, kind of an all-encompassing nutrition class. We definitely cover... Uh, the basics of nutrition, right? We get into the macronutrients, the micronutrients, and what they are and how to understand their function and role in the body. But we also get how there's a bit of an applied piece to this class, which is a sport nutrition aspect. So we kind of combine those two worlds. Uh, the Yeah, I'm your course instructor right there. I obviously don't have uh, office hours on campus. I'm still full-time over at St. Mary's, so I'm, I'm here in the Bay Area. Um, but if you need to get in touch with me, Email me. Always email me first. I will do my best, I promise, to get back to you within a day. That has sort of been my goal. Um, and I think I've been pretty good at that. Um, if you ever want to make have a meeting, uh, I'm happy to have a Skype or FaceTime meeting with you or just a simple phone call. Uh, whatever you need, I'll be able to hopefully accommodate that. So, uh, Moving down the course objectives, I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty of those. Um, they basically just address that, yeah, your, my goal and the class's goal is to inform you about the role of nutrition in health and performance. Um, we use two different textbooks in this class, and I really think that's important for me to highlight. So we use uh, sort of a standard textbook by Fink. It's called Practical Applications in Sport Nutrition. We're on the 5th edition. There's a 6th edition coming up in February. That won't be for you guys. So get the 5th edition. That's kind of nice as well. You probably are able to access cheaper versions of it since it's been around for a while and it's going to get phased out next year. Um, but the Think Book is very much your standard nutrition textbook that gets into the science of nutrition. But where it really falls short is the application of nutrition. How do you teach people to be better eaters? I would challenge anybody to finish this book or any standard nutrition book to finish the book and be like yeah i know what to eat now right you'll know what a carbohydrate is you'll know what a fat is but will you know when you go to the grocery store to a restaurant or when you're cooking at home what exactly are these foods uh, going to do to me and what's the best choice that's where these standard nutrition books sort of fall short um, and with that then we have a second book which is the dark side of fat loss by sean croxton the good news about this book is it's free 
Sean has been gracious enough to gift you this book. So I highly recommend you download it, save a copy on your computer. Um, this is the book that I've been using it for about nine years now. Uh, this is the book that is what I call a gateway book. It People read it and want to know more. It is um, not a heavy textbook. It's a very, what I call, easy read, even though it's very content heavy. It's something that people get through quite easily and quickly. Um, and it really opens people's eyes up into the role of nutrition and health, and more importantly, the role of choosing the right foods and not just knowing, yeah, I know what a carb is, doesn't matter if it's coming from candy or if it's coming from whatever, brown rice, th those differences are kind of teased out in this book. And um, so I really like to use this book. And again, it's free. So share it with your family, share it with your friends. Um, a lot of students do that. So we'll be using both of those books this semester. Um, the Fink textbook is available for purchase at your bookstore at Stanislas. Um, most online vendors carry it. Amazon has it. You can get a used version, you can get an e-version, or you can rent it. Do whatever you want. Um, it's a good book. It's not perfect. No books are perfect, but it's it's a good book. Um, so yes, be sure to get a copy of that, though. We do use it quite a bit, fifth edition. Um, and structural procedures, yeah, this is a fully online course. So everything is done online. If you've had an online class before, you know what that's like. If you haven't, um, there might be a little bit of an, a learning curve in the process. Uh, because it's all online, a lot of responsibility falls on you, right? We don't have weekly meetings where we get to sit around a classroom and chat. Um, that takes away from some interactions. That sometimes, to me, takes away from some learning opportunities. But what it mostly takes away is you having to be responsible to physically be somewhere. And so the the onus is on you to remember to log in and watch videos and to do assignments. And that's, to me, probably one of the bigger challenges that a lot of students have in this class is remembering to do stuff because you're not sort of forced to show up on a regular basis. Um, the administrative requirements, yeah, let's talk about how the class is set up a little bit. Um, the class is organized into 10 lectures that span the 16-week semester, I think it is. Um, and so the topics of those lectures are listed here. Each lecture um, contains Fink textbook material and Dark Side of Fat Loss material and lecture material. So each lecture has probably three different sources of material in it. Um, the within each lecture, and you'll see when we get onto Blackboard, uh, the lecture links, um, you'll open up a lecture folder. It will have a recorded video for you of a lecture like it would be in classroom. I've put a link to the notes for that lecture, so it'd be like PowerPoint slides on a, on a note page. And then I'll also include a Dark Side of Fat Loss PowerPoint for you to review. And we'll talk more about those when we get back into Blackboard. Uh, but for now, just know, yep, th these are the 10 lecture topics and those are the chapter readings within each of those topics. Uh, there are also quizzes for this class. These are called reading quizzes because that's kind of my intention with them. I want to get you to read. And so, because um, if you don't and you just watch the lectures, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, so the reading quizzes, there's 10 of them. They're only worth five points each. They're not point heavy, which is intentional. Um, they have 10 multiple choice questions. You have 12 minutes to take them. Um, here's an important piece that I want you to remember. The reading quizzes are on the readings. They're not on the recorded lectures. The readings and lectures overlap a lot, maybe 80% overlap. Maybe on my lectures, 20% of the material is just coming from me, not the readings directly. Um, but that being said, the reading quizzes, you, to best prepare for the reading quizzes, do the readings. Um, there's only 10 questions, so yeah, look at the main pieces uh, at the very least, just read the whole thing, but look at the main points of the readings and you know that should steer you in the right direction. Um, additionally, with these 10 quizzes, I only count nine of them towards your final grade. So if you take the all 10, that 10th one will be basically extra credit. So if you get five on all of them and you take all 10, you're gonna get five points extra credit. Or, and the reason I do this more is you can miss a quiz and won't be penalized for it. Almost every semester, a good handful of you, something's going to come up. Life comes up, you forget, whatever it is, you can miss a quiz and there won't be a penalty for missing a quiz. So that's the quizzes. We'll talk about the mechanics of them when we get into Blackboard. Uh, there are three exams in this class. Each of them are worth 50 points. Uh, they are not cumulative. So if exam one, for example, is covers lecture materials, one, two, and three. 
and then you're done with it. Exam two covers four, five, and six. Um, they're also given on Blackboard. Uh, there's no dropping exam and there's no makeup. So absolutely let me know ahead of time if you need to reschedule an exam. Um, I've allowed a fair amount of flexibility with taking them. So that usually isn't a problem. Um, there's five homework assignments and the homework assignments in this class um, are very much designed to be the applied portion of nutrition. Uh, the exams and the quizzes, yeah, that's kind of the your, hey, I understand the material. Homework or the assignments are, I know how to apply the material. To me, nutrition is a fascinating field. I am absolutely passionate about it um, because it's something that we can change and it can and experience immediate effects on our quality of life, on our performance, on our health. Um, but until we start to apply what we learn in nutrition, it's just knowledge. And so that application of the knowledge to me is where its value sits. And again, that's why I like the dark side of fat loss. And that's why I like these homework assignments. They kind of bridge a little bit in the online world as best we can, bridge that gap between theory and application. And so um, they're not intended to be hard, and they're not. They're pretty easy assignments, um, I think. Um, but really, their their uh, value comes from you applying some of the knowledge that you learned in the readings. We'll talk more about those in a minute. Um, the academic honesty statement is here. You want to click on it. You should know what cheating is and what it isn't. If you need to use a student disability resource services, they usually contact me. You don't have to let me know, but if you have any concerns with that, email me and we can. I'll accommodate you as best I can in any way possible. Um, the grading uh, map for this class here are your assignments and the points associated with them, both uh, exams, quizzes, and your homeworks. Uh, 250 points possible. Based on the percent of those points, your grade will hopefully fall somewhere on the scale. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward grading rubric there. Uh, the last section of the syllabus here talks about important dates. And so there are your quizzes, your homeworks, and your exams. I'm not going to be around to remind you. I'm not going to send you lots of emails. I don't like to spam you to tell you, hey, guess what? You have a quiz tomorrow. So it's it's on you, right? So this is a really good page to have printed and accessible um, somewhere frequently. So uh, homework assignments, there's the list for when they are due. Your quizzes. Um, and so let me take one step backwards. Your homework assignments can be done anytime. You could do your homework assignments today. They're open now to submit. Those due dates are the latest you can turn them in. Most of the homework assignments, especially the last three, um, are designed to follow material that we cover in lecture. So dietary analysis one, I wouldn't want you doing it now because it requires a little bit of understanding of your carbs, your fats, your protein intake, and that kind of stuff. Um, but the first two, you could do whenever. Um, those are the deadlines. Your quizzes, um, those are the dates for your quizzes. Uh, again, that's the deadline. And the deadlines are always at midnight for me. I don't make it in the middle of the day. Midnight on February 7th is when quiz one is due. Also, you could take every quiz today if you wanted. I don't suggest it, but you could take every quiz today. They're open now and you have access to them. Um, they're designed for you to take after you've watched and read the materials associated with that lecture. But hey, if you want to take them early, that's on you. Um, I like to give you that flexibility. Uh, the exams are a little bit different. I don't leave those open the entire semester. Uh, so exam one is open for a window starting February 22nd and ending February 26th. So you have a 22nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th. So you basically have five days to take it. It opens at 22nd at 6 a.m., closes 26th at midnight. So essentially five days. Um, those windows are when the exams are available. They'll disappear once the deadline is passed, and they won't appear until... The beginning of that phase. That's it on the syllabus. Let's talk a little bit about Blackboard and we'll be done. Maybe halfway there. Um, so if you scroll back up to your menu on the left here, we started here with the, the start here link um, or tab. Uh, your syllabus is here. This is your dark side of fat loss e-text. Click on this. It'll download a PDF file of the book. Um, and then I know it's about 10 or 12 megabytes, so it's not huge. Like I said, save a copy to your computer. You don't want to have to download it every time you read it. Um, this is an important link, especially right now, because I don't know what's going on with Blackboard at Stanislaus. So last semester, uh, we, students and myself, had incredibly large challenges, so to speak, uh, 
trying to download and watch videos that were posted. And so my lecture videos, some of the guideline videos that I'll show you in a second, this video um, took forever to load, sometimes four or five hours, and that's not okay. Um, so what I've done is created a YouTube page for the class with a playlist, and that playlist has um, the the lectures for the class on it, and they're in backwards order. I can't get them to. I could probably get them to switch. Um, but as you'll see here, yeah, lecture one, introductory lecture, lecture two, lecture three, and so on. So if you are having problems downloading or streaming or watching the videos through the Blackboard link, click on this link, and yeah, guess what? Chapter six video, you can just watch it straight here. Um, YouTube makes a living on making sure their videos are easily accessible. So as long as you have a good internet connection and a good computer, there should not be any problem watching these. Blackboard through CSU Stanislaus, something's going on. So until I get that resolved, this may be your go-to place for watching the lecture videos. So just be mindful of that. It's very, very important. Uh, so moving past this link, we have the lectures and reading material link. This is where you'll find the material for all those lectures. So uh, lectures one through 10 are listed here. You have various content within each. Um, if we look at, yeah, let's click on the digestion link. Um, all of the folders, when you open them, are gonna kinda look the same on the inside. You're gonna have the recordings. Most lectures have two recordings, part one, part two. Um, and even now you're saying, wow, it's taken a long time for those videos to pop up. Yes, it is. Um, they may not pop up at all while we're talking about it. So uh, still having issues with downloading. So, But e each folder, when you open it up, will have the recorded lecture. And then underneath it, it will have the note slides. I'm not going to click on that either because it's just going to be a slow process. But when you click on that, you'll have the PDF version of the PowerPoint that has, I think, four slides or maybe six slides per page, kind of small. You've seen it before. Um, the reason I give you that is a lot of students like to print it or put it on their computer and then take notes from the lectures because I don't read dr directly from the lectures. So, I, you know, the lectures have information on a slide and then I see that information and then I add to it. And so these lecture note slides give the opportunity, give you the opportunity to not have to write everything that's on the slide and just make notes on what's not on the slide that we discuss and that's often Im important information so you have those slides there for you great study tool great note taking tool at the bottom here we have the dark side of fat loss um, powerpoint and it's an entire powerpoint the purpose of me sharing this with you in this format is it makes it a little bit nicer, at least easier to read, and also a nice tool to use to study. Um, the dark side, like I said before, is an easy read, but it's kind of content heavy. And so what I've done with these PowerPoints, like most PowerPoints, I've condensed the most important information into bulleted form on a selection of slides. And so when you're getting ready to study chapter eight, here you go. Chapter eight has a lot of stuff about gut bacteria, has a lot about stuff about digestion, the relationship between thyroid and gut and all this good stuff. Chapter 8 PowerPoint, perfect place for you to use as a study tool to prepare for the dark side of fat loss quiz or exam. All right, let's get back to lectures and reading materials. So this is that place. And again, if the videos don't load, go back to that YouTube link up here in the start link uh, page uh, to see, find those same videos. It's the same videos. Uh, let's move down to quizzes. Here's the quiz page. Uh, so like I mentioned, the quizzes do have a deadline. They're all available to take now. You'll have a little bit of information on each quiz before you take it. It should be pretty much the exact same. 10 questions in 12 minutes on Fink and Dark Side of Fat Loss readings for lecture one. And right in lecture two, lecture three, lecture four, it just continues that way. So when you're ready to take the quiz, you just need to click on it. And it will show you some further instructions, which aren't a big deal. The big thing for you to know is that once you click begin down here, your timer starts. When that 12 minutes is up, timer's up, and you need to submit. If you go over time, you'll be penalized with points. So I will take points off when you go over time. It will allow you to go over time. You have to click a bunch of buttons that says, yep, I recognize I'm going over time. I know I'm going over time. There might be a penalty. You click yes enough or accept. Then it lets you continue the exam over time. I'm going to dock you points. Um, based on how much time you go over, and I'll let you know when I do that. So please don't go over time. Um, if you lose your computer connection, either the internet drops or your computer crashes, the timer doesn't start. Blackboard doesn't care. The timer keeps going. So use a good computer. Use a good internet connection so you can have it available for those 12 minutes. Um, 
I think that's all I need to share with that. So your quizzes are here. Again, you have the dates that they're due at midnight on these days. So quiz one is due February 7th at midnight. You can take it any time before then. And it goes all the way down to quiz 10 there due in May, which surely seems like a long time away from now. Exams. Ooh, exams. So let's have a look at the exams link. Um, the exams page looks a little bit different than the quiz page. The exams themselves look very similar. So exam one, this tells you when it opens, February 22nd. That tells you when it closes, the 26th. Um, in this case, you know, 65 questions in 80 minutes. That's very generous. Um, but hey, take your time, whatever you need. Don't go over time. Um, materials from lectures one through three. Same thing with the quizzes. You click on that link, you click begin, and the exam has begun and your timer has started. So uh, the other important material on the exam page is just below the exam link. Um, there's a study guide, and so this is a basically a Word document that I put together, That's or I think it's a PowerPoint document, that has like, hey, these are your best studying points for the exam one. Like this is maybe some areas and ways to best focus your study efforts to get best prepared. And then I've even made like a little nine minute video here that kind of covers the same type of material, but just more me talking about it. Um, this is the best review material for exam one. So again, two sort of study guides for the exams. The same exists, exists for exam two and for the final exam. So there's all the material you need at least to help prepare as best as possible are on these pages. And one thing to make note of, which I haven't yet, is that your final exam is only on chapter seven, eight, and nine. Chapter 10 is only on quiz form, just so you know. Um, don't care about it now, I hope, but at some point you might go, oh yeah, don't need to worry about 10 for the final. So uh, let's go to the assignments link. So the assignments page, uh, you have your five assignments listed here. And so like the other assessments, there is a due date in parentheses. So your first assignment, Mindful Eating, is due on February 14th. The way the assignments work um, is this. Firstly, all the assignments you'll see will have a link in blue that you can click on, and that is the guidelines for that assignment. Click on that. You have to click on that, please. Um, it will give you the guidelines on how to successfully complete the assignment. The mindful eating assignment um, is a really fun assignment, I think. Um, it kind of forces you to get in touch and be more mindful about the process of eating. And so some people don't like to have to slow down a little bit, but it's an eye-opener. Um, but if you don't read the instructions first, you'll have no idea what you're doing. And give yourself, like, don't, don't procrastinate on this one. Do it like the day before kind of thing. All you need to do is write a reaction paper. So, um, so with these assignments, you'll see the due date here. I'm having a hard time finding a way to change these due dates down here, so just ignore them. <laughs> Obviously, it's not due before September 13th. Um, this is the real due date. When you're ready to submit your assignment, let's say it's a mindful eating assignment, click on the link, and a page like this will come up. And this is true for all your assignments. It'll say the due date, Friday, February 14th at midnight or 11.59, um, points possible, and then you have options. Write a submission. If you click on that, you can type onto the page. Please don't do that. Um, Second choice, which should be the first choice here, is click the Browse My Computer button. That allows you to select a file from your, from your computer to attach and upload. Please use that. And please, for all of your assignments, Mindful Eating and for the Dietary Analyses and the Build a Supplement, all those, please use Microsoft Word or a PDF file. Uh, my computer, for some reason, and sometimes Blackboard, don't upload other sort of word processing uh, formats. And so, like, there's the micro, the the Mac version, the Apple Pages, or something like that. I don't know. There's all these different versions. Ah, they don't work so well. Microsoft Word, PDF are your sure bets. If you send it to me in an unreadable format, I will send you a nice message that says, "Sorry, you get a zero until you resubmit it in a readable file." So just do it right the first time. Um, once you've so, uh, uploaded your file, you just click Submit, and that's it. You're done. It's very simple. Um, there's another link to the guidelines there. It's the same as the previous link. So uh, one other piece about your assignment. So on the assignments page, you'll notice, starting with the grocery assignment, there's the guidelines for the grocery assignment. I've also put together a little guideline video. So I, I you know, want to give you the best opportunity to succeed recognizing that we're not in class together for me to explain these things. I've put together like, yep, here you go. This is a grocery assignment. This is what I expect. So take the seven minutes in this case, 
watch the video. It will help prepare you to be most successful on that assessment. Done the same for the dietary analysis uh, assignments. With these two videos, these the dietary analysis videos are on the YouTube page right now. Um, the build a supplement and the grocery videos are not there yet, but I will upload them soon, I promise. Um, so that's it on the assignments. Finally, we have the calendar link. And the calendar link, I think, is really important. So it's not December, it would be January, and you know, hopefully you're watching this video sometime around this week of the 27th. What the calendar link shows you, and you surely have used this before, hopefully for some of your other classes. I don't know how many professors at Stanislaus are using Blackboard. I imagine it's a lot nowadays. Um, but you could have all the calendars for all your classes highlighted here. So in this case, this is your class, Foods and Nutrition. Um, you're the dark blue stuff. I've even eliminated my other stuff on there. So, um, so all these blue ones are something that's due in your class. If I clicked on this first one, which this is January, so this is February 7th, and it says quiz, lecture one, due at midnight. So um, this calendar essentially is just another way for you to keep track of things that are due. If you look at the whole month of February, um, you'll notice a pattern. I basically make everything due on Fridays. Um, there's no real reason for that, only that I you know, know that some of you like to procrastinate. And if I made them do Saturdays, you might be spending your Saturdays doing stuff for this class. And life is too short. Enjoy your damn weekend. So... I make them do Friday night. Hopefully, you get them done before Friday and you can go out and enjoy your Friday night. But, you know, I, so anyway, so most things are due Friday nights. And so you know you have the opportunity to complete them early, except for your exams. In this case, the exam here, um, it doesn't tell you when it opens. Sorry, let me close this for you. So this is exam one. It opens on February 22nd. There's no notification of that. All it tells you on the calendar is when it closes. So sometimes students get in trouble and they say, oh, I saw the link and I didn't. I thought it opened on the 26th. No, it closes on the 26th. So just click on the link. It tells you what's going on. Exam 1, 22nd to the 26th by midnight. Uh, so use the calendar. Use the syllabus. My biggest advice to you all uh, for success in this class is stay on top of the readings and the lectures. Um, it's hard to get caught up once you get behind. Uh, don't miss the deadlines. I think that sometimes stresses students out for good reason. Um, and then it, again, it's hard to get caught up. So being mindful of the due dates for your quizzes and your assignments and your exams, staying on top of that is critical. Um, students ask what's the best way to prepare for the assessments. Um, you know, generally speaking, and I, you know, I say it in the exam study guides, most of the exams are kind of a 60, 40 split, 60% 60 from the, from the readings, and then maybe 40% from the lecture. So obviously you got to cover all the material, the quizzes, like I said, do the readings, the assignments are, are straightforward. Just put the effort in to do the assignments, um, and you'll be rewarded for it. Don't, you know, don't lollygag. So, um, I wish all of you the best semester for all of your classes, including this one. Please don't hesitate to contact me, and I'll be as available as I can to help you in any way possible. Uh, good luck, and bye for now.